Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to CDSL's Q2 FI24 conference call hosted by HDFC Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. Ladies and gentlemen, please note that CDSL does not provide specific revenue or earnings guidance. Anything said on this call which reflects CDSL's outlook for the future or which could be constituted as forward-looking statements must be viewed in conjunction with the risk that the company faces. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Amit Chandra from HTFC Securities. Thank you. And over to you, Mr. Chandra. Yeah, thank you, operator. So good morning, everyone. On behalf of SDFC Securities, we, uh, we welcome you all to the CDSL Quarter 2 FR24 earnings call. We have with us today the management team of CDSL, represented by Mr. Nehal Vora, MD and CEO, Mr. Giris Amishara, CFO, and other senior leaders. We will start with a brief overview of the results by Mr. Nehal Vora, and then we will start with the Q&A. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you so much, Amit. Uh, very, very good morning uh, to all the listeners and participants and welcome everyone. I hope each of you and your loved ones are safe and healthy. Thank you for joining us today to discuss CDSL's financial results for the second quarter for the new financial year, FI 2023-24. We've posted a detailed investor presentation on our website for your reference. I'm joined by the CDSL Group's leadership team. Let me start with the industry highlights and then take you through some of the key aspects of our performance. During the Q2 FI 2023 24, the overall Indian capital markets demonstrated a healthy growth. The total DMAT accounts, as on September 30th, 2023, stood at 12.96 crores, of which CDSL share was at 9.62 crores. The net DMAT accounts opened in India in this quarter was at 91.58 lakh, of which 80.28 lakhs were registered with CDSL in the Q2 FI 23-24. The comparative numbers for CDSL were 52 lakhs for Q1 of FI 23-24 and 48 lakhs for Q2 of FI 22-23. The total market capitalization of the market increased by 8% as on the end of this quarter, reaching rupees 319 lakh crores compared to 296 lakh crores as on June 30th, 2023. Furthermore, the, da the daily ta uh, turnover for Q2 FI24 witnessed a 33% increase when compared to Q1 of FI24. These positive trends reflect the financial inclusion and more more and uh, and and uh, and an increased participation by the investors in the Indian capital markets. These positive trends in the markets are also attributed to the recent industry advancements and regulatory measures. We believe these measures will benefit the industry in the long run by protecting the interests of retail investors and reducing the systemic risk. The, 25, the 25th year of operation is also very special for us. As we celebrate the 9 crore DMAT account milestone in July 2023, and further, I'm delighted to announce that CDSL has received the recognition for its excellence in digital execution. In October 2023, we were honored with the Tech Circle Business Transformation Award. As we reach the midpoint of our 25-year journey, <clears throat> we remain committed to enhancing ease of doing business and instilling trust within the financial ecosystem. Our ongoing efforts have yielded promising results. The current financial year is also a representation where we have experienced a sustainable and healthy business and financial performance as a result of the efforts of all the market infrastructure institutions. Before I hand it over to our Chief Financial Officer, I would like to take a brief moment to place our appreciation and gratitude to all our stakeholders, the beneficiary, owners, the depository participants, issuers, regulators, employees, and other market participants for their constant faith in us. We extend our heartfelt gratitude to our investors and the people of India whose, un, uh, whose unwavering faith continues to guide us. Our focus remains steadfast on building value for our stakeholders and securing a robust 
and Indian digital financial ecosystem. Thank you for your continued support and trust. Over to you, Gary. Uh, thank you, Neil. Good morning to uh, all of you. Speaking on the quarterly uh, performance on a consolidated basis, the total income uh, for, uh, for the quarter ended September 2023 is increased by 35 percent to rupees 230 crore as against 170 crore for the same quarter during the previous uh, previous quarter, uh, previous year quarter. The net profit for the quarter ended uh, September 2023 is increased by is also increased by 35 percent at rupees uh, 109 crore is against 81 crore uh, for the same quarter during the previous year. Uh, speaking on uh, uh, half yearly uh, numbers on a consolidated basis, the total income has increased by 28 percent to 404 crore is against uh, 316 crore. The consolidated net profit for the six months ended September 2023 has increased by 32 percent to rupees 183 crore is against 138 crores during the previous half. Uh, speaking on a standalone basis, the total income for the quarter ended September 2023 is increased by 29% to 182 crores as against 141 crore for the same quarter during previous uh, year. The net profit for the quarter ended September 2023 is increased by 28% at Rs. 88 crores as against 69 crores for the same quarter during the previous uh, year. Uh, speaking on uh, half yearly basis, on a standalone uh, Basis, the uh, total income has increased by 18 percent to Rs. 352 crores as against 298 crores during the previous half. Uh, the consolidated net profit has also increased by 14 percent to 180 crores as against 158 crores during the previous half. Now I shall uh, hand over to uh, Sunil Alvarez to give an update about uh, operation of the wholly owned subsidiary CDSL Ventures Limited. Thank you and over to you Sunil. Uh, good morning to all the participants. Uh, so far as CDSL Ventures is concerned, uh, the Q2 FY24 operating income was higher by 67% as compared to Q2 FY23. Uh, the operational income was 43 crores in this quarter as compared to 26 crores the last, last, same quarter last financial year. The income, other income was at 4 crore as compared to 3 crores uh, in the previous year. The total income was at 47 crores as compared to 29 crores in the previous quarter of, of the previous financial year. And uh, so far as the expenses were concerned, the expenses were higher by 66% at 18 crores as against 11 crores uh, as compared to the previous uh, same quarter in the previous financial year. The profit before tax for this uh, for Q2 FY24 was 29 crores as compared to 18 crores for uh, Q2 FY23, which was higher by 63%. And the net profit was higher by 61% at 22 crores uh, as compared to 13.44 crores uh, in Q2 FY23. With this, I hand it over back uh, for taking the question and answer. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. First question is from the line of Swardham Mukherjee from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity and very good morning. Congrats on a great set of numbers. Uh, sorry to interrupt uh, your voice. It's coming a little muffled. Can you please speak to the handset? Yeah, yeah. Just... Uh, is this better? Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. So, uh, morning, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, great performance for the quarter. Uh, Two, three questions. First one on the uh, IPO corporate action uh, line item. So I just wanted to understand, uh, uh, you know, how much of this uh, growth can be kind of sticky. So if you could give us some color or if quantifiable breakup on how much of this has come due to IPOs, how much through AGMs, etc., and how much to corporate actions. 
uh, so as to, to you know give us a flavor whether you know some part of this can be retained or whether this, there is a you know subsequent sub, uh, substantial seasonal element in this so that's the first one secondly uh, on the uh, kyc kra business so if you could uh, you know give us a sense why this uh, you know the is the performance has been very strong so whether the share of fetch transactions have increased or is it like the mix is relatively similar and it's volume driven because of which the growth has come and uh, thirdly on the cost side so if i look at the tech cost so uh, about uh, a year back uh, it was somewhere around 9 10 odd crores it has steadily moved up to 15 crore run rate this quarter so are we peaking out in terms of the run rate or should we expect further inflation in this given that you have previously also highlighted the technology in, in intensive nature of the business and uh, on the other expense increase if you could highlight uh, in the scandal of business what is driving that I understand that maybe some inter care charges is playing in the uh, kyc subsidiary but uh, in the scandal of business what is driving that uh, that's all from my side sir okay thank you on your first question on ipo and credit uh, uh, corporate actions it's kind of market driven so it's kind of difficult to predict and we don't give any future uh, 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 really reference points so we would not able to uh, kind of give a picture of the future uh, that's for you to assess uh, your second question was uh, on uh, on the krh charges uh, on fetch and uh, so i think it's broadly driven by the buoyant market conditions uh, number of dmat accounts growing and participation growing both in terms of delivery volumes etc uh, we don't generally give the really bifurcation on how much is fetch versus it. it's a consolidated number sorry your third question was uh, sir uh, before that if i if i could just ask you uh, uh, you know, I, I'm not. If, if even if a quantifiable this is possible, but if you could maybe some high, you know highlight whether this is really more fetch because you know given that mutual penit uh, you know penetration on the other financial products are also increasing, etc. So uh, I mean, is that an outcome of this? So that will Again, help us. It's uh, difficult to predict what has caused this outcome. It's kind of the overall buoyant market conditions. What has led to whether it's fetch or uh, uh, increased uh, KYC opening? It's a culmination of variety of factors, and it plays mm -hmm. uh, one upon the other. So it's difficult to give a uh, to give an answer which would be absolutely give the reason. It's a multiplicity of factors which leads to this, and hence uh, we are not able to give you a specific answer on that. Okay, sir. On the previous question on the IPO and uh, other you know agents and corporate action, I don't want a forward-looking uh, guidance. But uh, if you could at least give us a you know breakup between how much is due to IPOs and how much is due to other things, which will at least on a year-on-year -year basis recur. Yeah. Uh, so basically, this is IPO corporate action itself. The income itself, the head itself is. You know, based on the IPO that comes in the market, so it is totally market-driven activity. Uh, higher number of IPOs, we will be able to process higher number of. So it's completely due to IPOs. So basically, that's the answer. Okay, all right, sir. Uh, on the cost, if you could. Uh, give on the cost, uh, on the technology cost, is something which uh, is a constant, because uh, as we are. Uh, growing in number of accounts we have to plan and this is kind of a market infrastructure company so um, it has to plan for uh, the rise and growth and plan infrastructure takes time and technology infrastructure especially needs to only not only be built with what the current trends are but what are the future sophistications which are coming into the market so it's going to be a constant uh, uh, investment which we will continue to do as we move forward, this will be in sync with what is expected both from the regulators and the market to ensure that we are able to give the best in class performance as we move forward. In terms of other expenses, I'll ask uh, Girish to answer that. Uh, See, largely the other expenses, uh, you know, if you look at our cost structure, you know, payment to SEBI is again related uh, uh, based on my profitability 
and you know billing done for annual issuer income so higher the profitability higher the income there will be higher cost on on this account again if you look at uh, uh, inter gear expense it could be directly proportionate to the business the earnings that i do uh, on a top line in terms of care and income proportionately there will be higher care inter gear charges having said this you know the certain cost will move in proportion to uh, the movement in the income that's the submission i okay sir so on the regulatory bit you what you said other expense so i i was talking in terms of the split that you have given in the presentation where i think the regulatory cost is booked separately so excluding that i was kind of interested in understanding for the stand alone so for the kyc care i have an understanding for the remaining business x of regulatory cost was what i was pointing to so largely you know regulatory cost largely is on account of cdsl okay and uh, these are these are this is driven by the regulation so uh, we can hardly do anything about it yeah so sir outside that if uh, you know the break up you have given so there is one regulatory cost the other head is other expenses which has moved from last quarter at 41 crore to this quarter at 52 crores and uh, i think in fourth quarter it was at 30 odd crores uh, so i wanted to understand that movement if you if you could help me see this this being second quarter okay our e voting business uh, uh, would also have cost equivalently incurred so uh, you know e voting expense are there then we we have consolidated account statement related expenses then you know such kind of expenses are there which would be there in second quarter mostly because the income corresponding is higher on in the second quarter understood so it is largely granular there is nothing lumpy uh, yes. or and um, yes yes Okay got it sir thank you so much and all the best thank you thank you next question is from line of amit chandra from hdfc securities please go ahead yes sir thanks for the opportunity so my question is on the you know account addition demand account addition so obviously we have uh, you know seen a lot of traction coming back in terms of the additions and it has gone to the you know like peak levels but if i see the revenue per demat it has been coming down and if i see the revenue per incremental demat it is also you uh, know coming down so how do you see the like new account additions that are happening so these are not contributing much to revenues so how do you see this and uh, you know secondly on the on the private companies demat opportunity that has come up recently there are there are around 14 lakh mca registered private companies and uh, taking the lowest slab that comes to a bigger opportunity so is there any timelines in terms of uh, you know these companies getting uh, like demated so if you can provide some overview on that so on the first question i mean um, is more of uh, the building blocks getting created in terms of number of demat accounts how the mark how the investors will react to uh, as a group or as a collective group will be dependent on uh, how the market conditions are etc See, we are in the business of creating the right building blocks so for the people to invest whenever there is an opportunity for them to, they would like to really in, in invest. And that for me is the biggest uh, victory. That from a financial inclusion standpoint, more and more people are coming into the ecosystem, and that will uh, kind of play out over a long term. So we are not on a quarter to quarter. a uh, game plan that you know what will be the revenue increase it's a more of a long term sustainable game plan creating the right ecosystem and creating the right building blocks for us to take it forward from there so that's the answer to the first question on the second question uh, mca has just in recently put out this uh, regulation i think the timelines are given by by september 24 if i'm not mistaken mm-hmm. so i think uh, we are anyways uh, been doing this for a long time so from a technology and system point of view we are we are ready to go it's for them to now kind of really up, uh, kind of approach the depositories for taking it forward okay and so uh, you know on the on the e voting and e cash revenue if you can provide the brick up what was the e voting and e cash revenue in this quarter and uh also in terms of the uh you know the private company opportunity obviously the time is of september but uh, is there any uh, incremental cost that will incur or any incentive schemes that we earlier used to have incentive scheme for getting companies because we have a lower uh, like market share there so 
so are there any plans of uh, investing uh, in like in that piece uh so the first question I'll ask Girish to answer but the second question is um uh, um on the see we have uh, been very transparent and that's been the foundation of our uh, entire ethos so whatever uh, schemes we have we put it out on the public domain and uh, i think it's uh, the cost will be a function of as more and more people join the ecosystem the technology infrastructure has to kind of uh, be enhanced in sync with the increased participation and uh, to ensure that the service levels remain uh, high quality and therefore there will be a constant uh, assessment done and a constant in investment done as to what is necessary and required to be put in from a technology standpoint so again uh, i would like to repeat that we are not in a quarter on quarter uh, uh target point of view we are more on a long term sustainable business we are in that business of creating a market infrastructure like building a road and the value proposition will then kind of come over a longer period of time so that's how we see ourselves as we move forward first question i'll ask girish to answer so the eks income uh, for the quarter is 7 crore as against 5 and 1/2 crore in the uh, same quarter previous year uh, e voting is achieved at 15 crore in this quarter as against uh, 14 crore uh, in the same quarter previous year okay sir thank you thank you thank you next question is from the man of prakash kapadia from anvet portfolio please go ahead yeah uh most of the questions answered i just have one question you know if i look at uh, annual issuer charges they are at a run rate of around 63 crores which is you know a huge uh, bump up on a year on year basis even last quarter i think we were at this rate so if you could give us some qualitative flavor on you know what is uh, leading to this is it you know larger unlisted company revenues is it more folios given buoyancy of capital markets is there some pricing impact if you could give us some flavor the pricing impact is obviously put out in a public domain it's uh, there is no change there but it's a combination of both the first two factors is the increased number of private companies coming in into the fold as well as number of folios being increasing which leads to uh, this increase to uh, take place so the point is that uh, as any growth is concerned we are kind of uh, uh, our endeavor is to have multiple uh, touch points to ensure that uh, the growth remains uh, very sustainable uh, touch points in terms of uh, business development activities where you know we are ready for the opportunity as it comes is what you are hinting at nehal no both things uh, also ready from a technology point of view but also ready from a uh in ecosystem point of view that uh, as more and more opportunities come and multiple sources of this whether it be folios whether it be private limited companies so there are multiple sources of how the revenue would grow so based on that that is uh, basically how we are planning ourselves okay and and if it's possible to just quantify the revenues from unlisted companies maybe at the year end or in the first half if you can just share a number we generally that. don't share these numbers uh, so it will be difficult for us that okay fine thank, thank you. you thank you next question is from the line of paresh from club melena please go ahead so hi neil congratulations to you and your entire team for a fantastic performance thank yet you. again So most of my questions are uh, being answered, but we need a couple of clarifications. And before I ask Girish uh, clarifications on the financial side, because uh, you have thoughts on you know, the demand of having all the financial uh, assets in one place, right? We are losing your audio. Just one second. Uh, is this better? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, Neil, it is again on the larger question, uh, you know, longer term question of having all the financial assets in one place. Where are we in that journey? We've seen what the private companies, uh, uh, the uh, private listed unlisted companies announcement has come through. 
for clarification on that what would define a small company and the newspaper article mentions the number of small companies is just about 50000 out of say 13 14 lakh companies which are on the private space you know clarification on that what would be the definition so we we'll have to wait and watch because the regulations have just come in uh, okay the rules are yet to be notified so i think that will uh, is going through the process and we are also kind of really examining this but the intent is that uh, it's like any regulatory approach is basically a top down approach where the larger companies uh, are first subjected to the reform and then as uh, uh, the success grows the knowledge grows it kind of uh, the meter would go to the remaining part of the group so that's really the intent uh, behind and that's how is how they have gone about doing this <coughs> So, Neil, on the other, uh, you know, other asset classes, basically, whether it's insurance, whether it's commodities, or whether it's mutual funds, any update on, you know, how, what is the progress, or any, uh, uh, what's the update on that? So, insurance is, anyways, uh, permitted through our subsidiary insurance repository. Uh, the mutual funds are on a voluntary basis. and i think the important mm-hmm. thing from a india point of view and that's how we look at ourselves that for us india is the prime most focus is that there's a unique identifier of pan and pan aadhar combination which kind of gives it that unique identity so if it needs to get aggregated at some point and even the account aggregator system is something which is uh, also been uh, rolled out so that will give a lot of information and data on the investor to kind of pull for his or her consumption and for further analysis and that's how we will see how the system evolves matures and taken forward the right building blocks have been created to create a very strong foundation on which this entire structure can be built Yes. Your audio is not clear. Yeah. We are not is clear. this wanted to? Is it uh, better now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We just wanted to see clarification whether we have started charging the account aggregator in terms of a pull basis for the information that they seek. Not yet. Okay. Uh, and then uh, uh, just some uh, questions to Girish as well. the gross our revenues and profit both have grown by 35% but as seen the other expenses grow by about 40% so do we have any one off on those uh, expenses so there are no one off in the expenses okay and then regarding the sebi charges uh, gross you know i saw that that's gone up by 50% even though the revenues from a depository side are just up to 33% Has there been any change, or what actually led to a faster growth in SEBI fees this time compared to our depository revenues? The SEBI fees are basically based on the collection and not revenue. So if we have collected, say, revenue of previous year or uh, you know before three years, then we have to pay two uh, percent of those collected amount to SEBI. So uh, basically, uh, you know, that's the reason how it works. <laughs> Can you clarify that once again, Girish? For some reason, I don't understand. I thought it was the percentage of the revenue. The mechanism, uh-huh. the, the SEBI circular specifies that whatever whatever annual issue or income that you mm-hmm. that you levy to your customer, you collect that, and whatever is the collection amount, two percent has to be paid to SEBI as a fee. Now, suppose okay. in this financial year we have collected, say, for previous year or previous previous two years. So the incident hmm. of tax would happen in this year. Okay, okay, understood. So whatever the pending receivables are, they get added on yes, this year. Yes, okay, yes. and yes. and so uh, this this Girish has improved. That's the answer. Understood, understood. So have we had any write backs because of that? Because we normally provide for uh, the annual no. issue charges. No, no, no. Okay. So Girish, just one more clarification on the same thing. Uh, for example, when there are transaction charges, I presume they will also be included and be part of the SEBI fees, right? No, only annual issuer fees. Only annual issuer. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, thank you so much, and all the best to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Supratim Datta from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity. 
Uh, starting off with the first question, uh, if I look at your employee cost, uh, and I'm, I'm talking about the standalone business, it, the employee costs have stabilized uh, vis-a-vis the first quarter. Should we assume this to be the runway to, uh, going forward as well? Uh, so that's the first question before I go into my other questions. Uh, I think it'll be difficult. We don't give uh, forward-looking statements. But the important thing is that uh, this is a specialized business. We need uh, really the specialized personnel. And as we embark on a growth journey, we will need to kind of earmark more and more people also besides the technology increase. Uh, even the human resource needs to be enhanced to ensure that it's able to handle the increased growth. Uh, on the MC and you know the uh, notification by MCA, so you know like uh, people before me also discussed. So there are around 14, 15 million companies, uh, 14 uh, lakh companies, uh, 14, 15 lakh companies. Yeah. Out out of this, how many would fall into this bucket of above 40 crore uh, turnover? Do you have any sense around that? Uh, we are yet uh, in analyzing this, it's just coming, but uh, it will be the small companies which are kind of out of this uh, ambit. Uh, I don't think uh, uh, there is that number there at this stage, but there is something which we are in analyzing, so I will not able to give you a definitive answer at this stage. Cool. Got it. And uh, typically, uh, we have seen that you know, unlisted players have um, gone with NSDL as compared to CDSL. So, are you working to you know on certain aspects to better target uh, these companies as and when they come for the back services? Uh, as I've said earlier, I am not in a quarter-to-quarter -quarter game. I'm not in a competition game. I'm here in for a long-term value proposition for India. And that has been our thoughts as a management team. That you prepare, you put in, you put across a platform which gives the best in class services to the people and let the market choose whichever other is the better platform. Like we've seen in DMAT accounts, we were lower, we've increased. Now that has been the culmination of the long term uh, strategy. Same thing is what we will follow in terms of in this particular space also. Got it, got it. And last question from my side. So on the KRE charges, could you give a breakdown of how much of this would be coming from mutual funds and mutual fund account opening versus the DMAT account opening? We generally don't give that number. I'm sorry, I'm not able to show it. Oh. Okay, but could you give a broad sense about which would be the bigger? It is, uh, well, so if we don't give it, we so don't it, give it. It's actually difficult to say because uh, there are many brokers who offer, uh, you know, uh, credit of mutual fund securities in the DMAT account. So if there is a record pertaining to a mutual fund which a broker is doing, okay, that would actually go into a broking account or spread charge pertaining to uh, that particular record. So it will be difficult to say whether a broker is doing it either for a mutual fund or for a security. Got it. And a uh, final question from my side, on the insurance repository business, uh, you know, one of your peers is working on launching an app uh, which would, you know, not only be an insurance repository, but provide additional functions as well. Uh, as, as in, you know, you could have all your policies at the same place and, you know, other services. So are you also looking at, you know, enhancing the service you know, how are you thinking about that business? If you give some color? We have a new uh, management team now. Uh, we have a new MD and CEO who has joined the insurance repository. And he would be driving the entire uh, strategy. I am uh, pretty confident he would be driving basically the digital journey. So that is something which we'll have to see in future. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Arushi Shah from Social Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, am I audible? No, ma'am. Can you please speak through the handset? Hello, now. Better? Hello? 
Yes. Yeah, sorry for the inconvenience and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just one question from my side. Uh, the transaction uh, charges which we see in our, in our financial performance consolidated, uh, which have increased substantially from Q1 to Q2, is it uh, because uh, new accounts are being opened or the absolute charges uh, have increased? If you could throw some light on that. So we don't charge anything for account opening. It's only on... Uh debit transaction that we uh, charge. Okay. No, no, my, um, uh, what I meant to is that since new accounts are being opened, so like uh, the per account, whatever, or per uh, transactions, what we charge. So since uh, more transactions yeah, are... Yeah, I'm, I'm just coming to that. So therefore, it's uh, a culmination of uh, both existing as well as new investors. And that can okay. be showcased as I had put, given the industry highlight as to mm -hmm. how the daily traded volume, the delivery volume, etc., is growing quarter on quarter, as com okay. of, of this quarter as compared to the last quarter. So that okay. kind of showcases the increased participation. But difficult so, uh, to uh, really bifurcate between whether this is from new <laughs> investors or it's from old investors. Uh, okay. Okay, and also like uh, per transaction or anything, our transaction charges have uh, risen like in absolute terms. Like if we were charging one rupee, uh, we charge one point five something like that. We've actually uh, brought it down. So okay, have, so uh, it's reduced. Yeah, we have actually have introduced a additional layer of transaction mm -hmm. charges. Uh, we have a layer based uh, transaction based on your basically slab based. So okay. We've introduced, uh, lower slab. Oh, okay. So it's more like a volume play, right? That's the correct way to read? Yeah, so more the volume, the lower the charges you pay. Okay, okay. Thank you and congratulations on a good set of numbers. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Miraj from Marianne Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on a great set of numbers, sir. Uh, I have two questions. The first one is regarding the announcement that came some time ago regarding the settlement, uh, T plus 1 hour settlement, uh, which the SEBI is aiming to do by January and later subsequently by October they are planning an instant settlement. Uh, I wanted to understand that uh, any infrastructure layout that needs to be put up, uh, the expenses are supposed to be done by us. So uh, if yes, then have we incurred anything in this uh, uh, regard yet? And uh, secondly, I wanted to understand that uh, is this play, uh, is this idea of introducing T plus one hour settlement more towards uh, increasing volumes or is there any other goal for this? And this was my first question, sir. Yeah. So uh, this is going to be a constant uh, process of investment. As reforms happen, we need to kind of, and each market infrastructure institution will have to incur its own cost. Uh, of implementing these changes and whatever share uh, is of both CDSL and SDL will have to incur it themselves. Uh, so that's something which uh, is uh, something the intent is it's going to be on an optional basis. It's very clearly put out by the SEVI chair it is giving more power to the investor to choose that if him he or she would like to get instantaneous settlement, moving towards an instantaneous settlement, thereby reducing the, uh, basically the credit uh, risk which is there in the system where he, he or she can get the funds immediately. So it is moving, giving more uh, products for the person to opt for. Somebody can opt for a T plus one or a T plus zero and finally moving to really an instant day settlement. Understood, sir. So uh, in this regard, from our end, have we uh, incurred any expenses yet to set up T plus one hour or instant? Yeah, it's a constant process, as I said, that we will have to, we are in a constant process of investment. The technical team is obviously working towards it to ensure that it uh, is able to, it is satisfied the timelines which would be prescribed by uh, in this Understood. And my final question, sir, uh, is that uh, on the annual issue charges revision part, uh, if I'm not wrong, it is currently 11 uh, uh, annual issue charges. Uh, has there been any discussion on the revision part? 
not yet uh, it's a constant process so we have not yet and we generally don't uh, discuss our uh, regulatory matters uh, in uh, this forum so that's something which is a separate uh, discussion okay got it thank you so much uh, and all the best for the future i'll get back into you there any further questions thank you thank you thank you next question is from nano santosh from keshri finance please go ahead am i audible hello yes please okay uh, thank you for such a great set of numbers uh, i had the uh, two questions one is that typically uh, the number of additions that we are seeing in the demat account so looking at that uh, uh, if you can share that what is the incremental revenue we get out of every uh, demat account that's created added because typically a customer is getting charged something like 500 rupees a year uh, if my understanding is correct but some brokers do not charge as much for example jirodha is charging us 200 so we are not getting a sense that how much is the cdsl revenue from each incremental demat account that comes if you can just throw some we money. don't charge anything for really retail so for uh, retail is completely free <clears throat> okay and so typically then, uh, yeah. and uh, the uh, non retail corporate accounts is about 500 rupees a year Okay, uh, so by retail you mean the H U F H one? Yes, the Hindu one divided family. Yes, yeah. and corporate is private sector, uh, private private companies and yes. uh, F I I S and yes. things like that, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so for any reason that you don't charge for demand because you are providing such a valuable service to, uh, and it's one of the as you have been saying and maintaining all along, it's such a infra service. No, such a big and uh, huge infra service. Then any reason that we are not charging? Is there a bar from SEBI, or we are, we have decided not to charge? Bar from SEBI. Uh, it's more to do with our responsibility towards the country. Also, we are uh, kind of contributing to financial inclusion. And uh, while commercial uh, uh, aspects are critical, but also the market development is extremely critical as a. Uh, a theme for us to continuously grow and our contribution to enhancing the sophistication of the securities market in india and that's one of the reasons why we want more and more people to come in into today cdsl is there at 98% 98 99% of the pin codes in india uh and uh, there has been a growth which has taken place in terms of number of demat accounts we want more and more people to join this ecosystem uh, so therefore the entry is kind of remains especially for the retail uh, we are trying to kind of really encourage more and more people to join the ecosystem and hence there is no charge okay okay great sir proud of your services thank you so thank much you. thank you thank you next question is from man of sanket from avendor spark please go ahead uh yeah thank you thank you for the opportunity uh, sir uh, uh, again again on this question of uh, uh, private companies mandatory to be done uh, dematerialization of their shareholding uh, you uh, probably you on aware about the number of companies uh, which are less than 4 crores trade capital of 40 crores turnover but but in your rough guess how much that number would be if if you uh, if you have any wild guess on that point number 1 and and second uh, given you were your way you know charge is 2500 rupees on the unlisted company um, uh, if, if such a big volume come uh, whether we can see downward pricing pressure from from 2500 rupees to come down uh, which could have an impact on the potential revenue realization that's my first question so on the first uh, part i would not like to give any wild answers i would like it to go through a proper uh, working before i can reveal okay. that so i'm not able to give any numbers on what are the numbers mm-hmm. in terms of uh, the pricing uh, it's a function of um, various uh, things and anyway the depository pricing is approved by uh, is sebi also yeah so in terms of that uh, uh, it will go through its own process i think it's a fairly low charge uh, yeah they, uh, Uh, our uh, in-house helps get paid probably more than this, so I don't think uh, companies should have a problem in uh, kind of uh, paying up these charges. They are very, very, very less and nominal. Got it. Got it. 
Uh, and uh, and and the second question, uh, what we have is that uh, what I have is that so on on KYC income, uh, which which has done uh, well in, in the current quarter. Uh, so so uh, there seems to be a very strong correlation when when the IPO activity is very strong in the year, um, or or in the quarter, uh, then then we see a very bump up in the KYC income. So so just wanted to understand out of the seven million crores of KYC income, how much you can attribute to 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 or or directionally how much you can attribute to the K IPO activities. If if it slows down say in subsequent quarters, we will see a, see a moderation in the KYC income. Actually, that's going to be difficult because when an entity fetches a particular record, yeah. okay, or creates a particular record, we have no clue whether it is because of an IPO or because uh, you know he is using it elsewhere. So uh, that is something we will not be able to track. But but it is safe to assume that uh, KYC uh, IPO activity have a meaningful impact on the KYC income growth, right? Absolutely, because IPOs will add to the number of DMAT and broken. Yeah, but account. again, it's difficult for us to yeah. predict that it's only because of IPO or it's because of other factors. It's basically the participation in the securities markets which will cause uh, this impact to occur. Now, if the participation is due to IPOs or due to secondary markets or due to mutual funds, is difficult to predict in future, and that's why we are really unable to say. Got it. Got it, sir. And, and and few data keeping questions. I think in the past you have disclosed these numbers. Uh, uh, first is on impairment cost, which has happened in the current quarter. Second is uh, uh, pledge income, and and third is annual issued charges from from unlisted entities. Allah's greatest one. Annual. Uh, I think we are not disclosing the uh, unlisted annual issuer fees, but yes, margin pledge we are disclosing. Yeah. We issued 4.19 crore uh, income during the quarter. And uh, with respect to uh, impairment, yep. the value is 3.3 uh, crore in this quarter. Okay, so, so it has gone up uh, compared to last uh, quarter, right? It was 1.7 crores. Uh, uh, so uh, is it due to any specific reason, or or, or is this just a if you, conservative? If you if you understand the ECL requirement uh, on the data's provision, it is basically based on the history history of the data's. Now, mm -hmm. in one quarter, there could be, you know, higher collection, and because of that, there could be a lower charge. So it it, it it will not. We cannot derive any fixed formula that yes, in this quarter the cost is going to remain the same, and accordingly we can make prediction. That would not be possible to do for impairment. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, perfect. Uh, that that's very much clear. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that's it for me, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Age of Frederick from Sundra Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So just one question. Uh, you mentioned that online charges are dependent on DMET account opening, delivery volumes, and IPOs. So if I do a sequential comparison, DMET has gone up by 9% and delivery volumes by 41%. However, online charges are about 80% growth sequentially. So the gap, can I assume it to be IPO? driven yeah you you can possibly take that as your uh, derivation but uh, we kind of it's difficult to again uh, predict that whether it is only because of this factor or there are a multitude of factors which happen which play upon that because one can impact the other factor also but as a broad thumb rule probably what you have analyzed you can take that just one clarification uh, the delivery, the income due to the delivery volume correlation would be for the depository business and not the KRA business. Understood. That is very helpful. Thank you. That is strong. Thank you. Next follow-up question is from Rana Swarnam Mukherjee from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. So, I, I on similar lines, uh, of uh, what I just asked, uh, I just wanted to understand that if I look at uh, the growth in the number of DMAT accounts, uh, what is there in uh, first quarter versus second quarter, that growth is around 55%. So, uh, uh, given that uh, that revenue item has moved uh, close to 80%, so I uh, could not understand what is the difference of around say 20 25% growth, remaining growth. So, some uh, you know, highlighting some levers on that would be helpful. 
it's overall the market activity because see uh, whatever are the uh, we charge for the debits we charge for the margin pledges we charge for so it's again a multitude of factors as i said uh, one transaction can so one to one correlation on the factors is difficult to do because it's the culmination of these transactions which lead to whatever is the income which is really drawn out of that sir uh, just to clarify for the uh, under the online data charges we only book the revenue from the kyc business right or is there anything else also that's right yeah. that's right that's right yeah so i i i'm not sure you know i'm not get how transaction charges will uh, i mean transaction uh, and debits will also benefit this if you could explain it. no it depends on how the fetch takes place uh mm-hmm. then what whether that will lead to a debit whether he has transacted in one stock or five stock or 50 stock or 100 stock that's difficult to predict and whether that will lead to whether that is done through one account or through many accounts so whether the fetch for those many accounts will be much more if it's one account fetch it will be less but basically the transaction income will be more so again therefore one is to one correlation is not possible to be done that is the point i was trying to make Okay, sir. Okay, all right. I'll I'll take this offline for a little bit detail understanding. Thank you. Okay, sir. thank you. Thank you. The next follow-up question is from the line of Santosh from Keshri Finance. Please go ahead. Sir, thank you again for taking my question. I just wanted to know that what is the market share of CVRL in the business itself? CVRL. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, your KYC business, CBL, right? CBSL ventures. So figures are mm-hmm. unpublished, but uh, our estimate is about 65%. 65%, okay. And our biggest competitor would be? Uh, it's only an estimate, so I think that should be very clear. Okay, 65%. All right. So has there been an increase in market share or decrease in market share, sir, over the past year or so? It's been more or less constant, I would say. More or less constant. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next follow-up question is from the line of Miraj from Arihan Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. So just uh, a follow up on the same point uh, I had earlier regarding the T plus one R settlement. Uh, it is planned to be implemented from January onwards. So is there uh, any circular on it that SEBI has uh, released or is this just a, is there any discussion paper or anything on that? Yeah, we should expect something. There will be a circular to that effect or a discussion paper. I will not able to comment on how how really the regulator will do it. But uh, there will be a formal kind of an announcement. So what will be the timelines, etc. Uh, based on that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sankit Gora from Avanda Spark. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, one, one small data keeping question is, is how many uh, capital market records we have. Uh, last year we ended up with uh, around 55.5 crore capital market records. A similar number what it would be today? Sorry, the question is not clear. What do you mean by capital market records? Uh, the KYC records what you have with uh, you, which, which was around 5.5 crore for CDL. In September quarter we had about 6.1 crore. Oh, okay, perfect. And, and and the second question, sir, was was again a simple question that that uh, uh, given given uh, in the current year, uh, promoters uh, uh, did a lot of selling, uh, which means that uh, the number of folios probably at the retail level will increase. So so that benefit might not be reflected in the current year, right? Because because what you have charged on annual charges is based on last year number of folios. So that benefit should should flow uh, flow in 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 FI25 as the number of folios will increase. So 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 my understanding is right there, sir. Again, I'll not able to predict how this will pan out over the next course of the next uh, two, three quarters. It's only come to know at the end of the year as to how many folios are there. Uh, again, these are forward-looking statements, so we don't uh, we don't give any forward-looking statements. So I'll not able to give a specific answer on this. 
got it. So actually, my, my intention was to understand directionally uh, that, that, that uh, we charge and yeah, we charge based what you're on. Saying, but tomorrow, my point is that tomorrow in the next quarter, there could be basically a reversal which could happen. The promoters start buying more and the retail start selling. So, how will I tell you that whether this is wrong, right, etc.? So, again, it will be what is at the end of the year the folios that the formula will be applied as per the numbers on that. Got, got it. Sir. Perfect, perfect. Uh, thank you, sir. And that's it from my head. Thank you. Nilesh. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Nehal Vora for closing comments. So I would like to thank all the people for their questions and the participation. Please stay safe and well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of HDFC Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you.